Yeah, I mean, I'll start with uh, something that's not basketball since it just hit all of us uh, that uh, the news on what Matt Ishbia has uh, done uh, for our university, for our program, for me in particular, is about as humbling and as um, sort of tear jerking as anything that's happened to me. Um, I know there's a press conference tomorrow and I'm going to go over a lot of stuff then, but uh, with the uh, release early, I just, uh, I can only say that I can't thank him enough. I think some people, um, you know, when, when things are going bad, and I look at uh, some things I've done here over the last couple of years to donate some things and do some things, because when things are going bad is when people really need you. And uh, not when things are going good. You know, I get phone calls from Mateen all the time when we lose. I never get anything when we, when we win. And I think, uh, you know, Matt looked at a time when, geez, universities are all struggling. Um, our uh, athletic department is struggling and our country's struggling. And he just, uh, he just came through uh, when uh, times are our toughest and uh to be honest with you that's uh i'm just gonna need a little time i'm gonna use tonight to uh really get my thoughts together because what he's done is is so incredible that right now words can't express it as far as uh our team goes you know we're coming off a week um that no doubt we needed a day off yesterday uh, the three games in five or six days and staying on the road there and kind of practicing but not practicing um, has been difficult. Now we got a few home games where at least we can practice and be here. There's no denying that it's been a tough stretch for us, but I thought our effort in the last two games has improved. I thought our play has improved. Our shooting has gotten better, but not marketably better and I think that'll be the last step that could make the difference in winning some of these games and not. As far as Nebraska goes, you know, there's only been three teams so far that have come back off COVID. We were one, Penn State was one, and now Nebraska uh, is, is the third one and, you know, Michigan will have to do it, although they don't have any players that have it. They've still had some time away and it is difficult, uh, you know, Fred and I talked, you know, during the time when they went down and, uh, but uh, we were able to grind out a win at their place. That was almost a month ago. Uh, had a great game from Aaron Henry, 27 points. We'll need to get help from others. I think Josh is in a lot better place right now as far as, uh, you know, it took some time to get him back Then, unfortunately, he got back and he was playing pretty well and then the COVID thing hit him. And uh, I think he's practiced three times full since January 7th. And uh, so, uh, you know, we have to still get him some rest every now and then, which we're gonna do today. He'll be able to practice full go tomorrow and play Saturday. But uh, Nebraska has a couple guys that did give us problems. Teddy Allen had 23 and that Gowan's kid at 20, and both guys, uh, Allen can shoot the ball from anywhere. He's got an awkward shot, and it just goes in. Uh, he's, he's a very, very kind of a European type player. He's got the step arounds, he's got the long threes, um, very effective. And McGowan, I think, is one of the better guards in our league. You know, he's quick, he can shoot it, he shot pretty well in our game but he's lethal on their fast break. He's kind of like a one-man fast break and he pushes it. So um, hopefully today we'll have a good practice. Tomorrow, everybody's spirits are up, even though we're disappointed. Um, I think the news of Matt will bring a little life to our team and uh, we're ready to go. That's a good point, Matt. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, I'm 99% sure. You know, like I said, I've talked to Fred before. I know they've been practicing. Uh, I think they had so many people that had it. I don't think, um, you know, if somebody else gets it, I don't think it would change anything. But uh, that is kind of the question that never gets asked in any press conference over the last, and now we're starting to see more teams, Louisville, this team. And um, so I guess, like I told, I think some of you, so much pressure on these kids. It was the last couple of weeks when we've been on the road and we test day of the game. You know, I see some guys come back to the bus and give it one of these, you know, whew, I made it, you know, and I didn't realize that kind of pressure or strain was on them. And I, I've said this, to, I think you, I've said it nationally. I don't think it's the COVID they're worried about as much as the 17 days they'll miss. And uh, that's a lot on these kids. And uh, but as far as I know, um, I think we're both raring to go, and I'm sure he's excited to get back on the court also. Listen, I wanted to ask you, too, about obviously, you know, where your record's at now, the competitive that these guys are. How do you balance all the good things you saw from the other night with also understanding you didn't quite get over the hump? I'm still trying to close out that without being down about a four game losing streak or anything like that. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a fair question because. Um, it doesn't do any good to play better. Sooner or later, you got to win games. And, uh, and that's kind of exactly how I said it to the team in the locker room after. Um, you know, we did some good things. Uh, we still missed some good shots. We still missed a couple of good passes. Uh, we missed some free throws from guys that don't normally miss them. It doesn't take much, and you win that game. But you got to find a way to win a game. And I think that is... Uh, you know, the bottom line of this whole thing. I, I think our players understand that. I think they know what they've been through. I mean, we could have been very, very good and lost those three road games. Very good and lost those three road games. So I think they understand who we're playing and what we're doing. But I also think uh, maybe they don't understand that these little things and making a wide open shot or free throw or free throw cut out like cost us a little bit. A little bit in Iowa, of course, a lot against Purdue. Uh, those things matter, and those are the little things that every coach always says, the little things matter. So we're working on that. No, <laughs> I don't yet. That's a great question. And I think I will when I really reflect back, you know, at the end of the year. I mean, right now I'm so I, – I don't think we're that far away. You know, and that sounds crazy. We've had some bad games. We've played bad. But, you know, you look at last night. I mean, i never seen so many teams lose. You know, I watched Villanova lose to a, you know, a team that wasn't very good. I watched uh, – Georgetown beat Creighton, and Georgetown hadn't won many games. I, I, I just saw so many different games. I mean, it's it's just the way it is right now. So I couldn't tell you what it's going to take to get in the tournament, what it's going to take to win the Big Ten. Um, I just think there's a lot of unknowns, and uh, I do appreciate. You know, I funny because I talked to Mateen this morning. He called, and I, I appreciate. Um, what it takes to win and how much leadership and good point guard play and you got to make shots, you can't make the little things do matter. I, I think that's what I reflected back on. I reflected back on the war game. You know, we did it last week. We went at it three times a day. We rebounded better, you know. Um, it'd be easy for someone to say, well, why didn't you do it all year? And I gave you the millions of reasons why we don't. But – I think, Lindsay, my real reflection will come when the year is over. But uh, I had enough guys that call me, lot former players. You know, this is when um, hopefully our family is at its best. You know, we got a guy that's giving an amount of money that, hell, I told him, you, instead of giving it here, you could buy the whole UP with that. And, uh, you know, including the bridge, I think. But uh, it's uh, – it, it gives me great pride to know that people 
think of you and think of your program and think of what you do as a university that has impacted their lives enough to do something like that. And as I said, you know, Mateen, he call, a lot of guys are calling and texting, and um, it just makes me realize there's a way that it's got to be done. Well, maybe we weren't able to do all of that this year, and it affected us a little bit more because of a lot of things. But we're still in a position right now where most of our guys have had it. We're hoping there's not a round two for them. We're hoping we can start moving forward. We're hoping that that I coach a little better and they play a little better. And between the between all of us, we kind of grow, you know. And that's that's what's happened, you know. It was Miles that sent me a text the other night that said that, you know, with coach, we were 11 and nine my first year, you know. We won eight out of ten or whatever we did, you know. And that's kind of the mentality that we're trying to look at moving forward. You know, he's supposed to work out a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, and Sunday or Saturday is his first day uh, of being able to play. But uh, I, I really don't know. You know, I, I, I tried to learn from Josh's and Marty's, and the one thing I learned is being in the weight room riding a bike as you're, you know, you have those three, four days to move forward. Um, I'm not sure it's as good idea as maybe running sprints because uh, there's something about game situation. Like, I think Josh is in decent shape cardiovascularly, but I think his legs aren't there with him yet. And the only way you get your legs there is that stop-and-go action. So we're going to try to do a little better job with, with uh, Gabe as far as that goes. I know he's dying to play. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does today, just moving around, maybe in the – Jim alongside of us and if he can do anything tomorrow as far as you know they give you those two three days to work back um, I'd probably know more by then Well, I think it's the biggest question that a lot of coaches around the country are asking themselves and asking each other. I probably talked to more coaches this year than ever. I probably had more meetings with players than ever. Uh, but nobody looks at it that way, you know, like a player. You know, I mean, they don't realize the things. When I, when I said how long it had been since we played the war game, you know, when we started practice, uh, it was six months. You know, we usually play it all summer. And... Uh, and and I think you don't realize it till you go through it. But uh, you know, when I say push them, uh, they got to push themselves too. But I got you know, holding people accountable. There's no reason we lose a game because of a free throw cutout. Uh, you know, that just can't happen, and that's on me. And uh, and then you know, we've had a couple other games where we've made those kind of mistakes that almost never happen. And we work on it every day before a game. That day of a game, we work on that. So it is a point of emphasis. But, uh, you know, maybe it's not demanded enough. Maybe it's not harped on enough. Uh, so I feel good about where I'm at, too, now. I had meetings with players all this whole trip, you know. And I, I told them, you know, things got to get a little tougher. I think they know it. but. You guys probably know this. Those of you that have kids, you have a wife, you have friends. Um, it's a tough time what they're going through, and tougher than even I am aware of at times, uh, and especially at 20. And uh, so every coach is trying to worry about where the kids are mentally. And you know, now school started back up. I had my first academic meeting uh, today after the couple weeks of the startup, so that find out where they are and what's going on. They've got so much stuff on their plate that even a jerk like me gets uh, a little compassionate and shows a little empathy. And But I think, you know, I said I got to take the gloves back off because um, we got games to win and, and I just got to explain it to them better. So that's why, man, I met with guys on the plane going to Iowa, coming back from Iowa, in Iowa, I had meetings that night, the next day, just to try to still 
help them understand, I know you're going through a difficult time, but there's still only certain ways that you can win games, and, and that's what we've been doing. Oh, I'm I'm definitely expecting that, you know. I'm definitely expecting that. But no, we haven't. Uh, I talked to KP about it this morning. You know, the problem is you got a team like Michigan right now. I don't think anybody knows when they're coming back, for sure. And so because of that, you know, I mean, we're scheduled to play them twice, so that pushes a lot of things back. They're they've still got to play. Um, I think it's Iowa. They haven't played yet. Or Illinois. Uh, or us, I, I don't know if they, I th Ohio State, I don't think. So they're going to have a lot of games too. I don't know how many they missed out on. I haven't really looked at that. I got enough issues myself, but but they're just one team. And then, you know, I, I think the conference is looking at, we still have so many conference games and before we start going to three and four a week, we want to try to see where everybody is. The minute that happens, you know, maybe some other team goes down. Uh, you know, that's the hardest part of this whole thing right now. So there's actually been zero, probably because we have scheduled games that are, you know, in a time slot where we came back from Tuesday, we're on the road. Um, other teams couldn't play like Thursday, or maybe we'd have played a Thursday, Saturday. We play Saturday, then I think we play Tuesday, and then I think we could start funneling some games in there somewhere. But, uh, that's up to KP, the Big Ten office. I've already accepted that there might be four games a week. There could be back-to-back -back games. Um, you know, I just don't know. Is, is there a chance that the Big Ten tournament gets wiped out? Um, have, have you heard anything about the move to Indianapolis? I saw a report today that it's been more or less finalized. Well, I heard rumors out there looking at that just because of the situation in Chicago, to be honest with you, um, just because that's one of the states or one of the cities that's been hit hard. Um, I did not know it was finalized. As far as the Big Ten tournament goes, uh, I think there's been national talk on all these tournaments on what happens. Um, and, and again, that will definitely be uh, out of our hands. Uh, I think that'll be conference offices, ADs, presidents. I, I, I'm on one committee that we've talked about it and uh, with, you know, the 10 coaches all over the country and, and everybody's got some concerns. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, there's everything we do is to try to keep the fewest amount of people from touching our players, more or less. And then all of a sudden you're in a conference tournament where you're somewhere and there's 14 teams and in some states you might have some fans there. And so I just don't know what they'll do with it. Um, as of right now, I'm 90% sure they're playing it as of right now. I heard the same rumors as you that they were looking on moving it to Indy. Um, that would make sense if Chicago's beat up a little bit and under the protocol Indy would have as far as uh, facilities and everything, uh, since they seem to have one of the best in the country, hotels close, different venues to play in, things like that. You know, I mean, we've had a lot of women's programs that already opted out of the season. I think there'll be some men's ones that do opt out and having the season. We've had players opt out from playing in bowl games. Uh, you know, who knows? We could have players opting out for playing in NCAA tournament games. Um, it's a crazy time, uh, Brendan, and, and I, I don't know what will happen there. Uh, I would hate to play a tournament where everybody wasn't involved. 
I, I would, but I, I do understand you gave maybe the best example of all, you know, would you be the number one overall seed if they remain like they are? Go to Vegas, play in a tournament where there's three or four other tournaments going on, and just being in Vegas alone is no insult to the Vegas people, but a little shakier by the way that everybody moves around there. Um, so I, I wouldn't blame a team. I just, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that we'll all do what's right. You know, I, I think we have TV partners that, you know, have had it tough. Everybody's had it tough. So how do you make it fair for everybody? And uh, boy, that, that's a decision I couldn't make right now. But I, if I was one of those teams, and you could look at it the other way. If you're one of the, the teams like we are right now, if you, if you might need the tournament to fight your way into it. But I would just hope we did what was best for basketball. Uh, not Michigan State, not Gonzaga. What is best for basketball? And if one of those is you have a choice and everybody understands that, then I think that's what's, what's best, you know. Uh, but it would be hard if we had a tournament and two or three of our best teams weren't in it. That seems like it would be a difficult thing too, but if that's what they decide to do, I'd like to play as many games as I could play within the safety and protocol that we have in our league and our university. And uh, that means I'd love to play in the Big Ten tournament. I'd love to play every Big Ten game we can. Uh, beginning of the year, there were guys on the committee I was on that predicted we'd get 20 games in. You know, right now, if we just schedule the games we've gotten, we'd get, we'd get 23 in. If we get to reschedule some of those games, it might be 24. If they don't, 20 might be a number, you know. I, I don't really know. I just like to play as many as we can as long as the players are as safe as they could be, which to me still means playing here is safer than being out on the streets. There hasn't been that I know of. Um, I, I think, like I said, I think what you'd see instead, I think you'd see three and four games a week, you know, and uh, or you might even see a a back-to-back -back game, you know, like if you're playing at Rutgers and it was the you played them twice and it was the first time, you know, maybe you and Rutgers decide, hey, we'll play both games there, one right after another, and then fly home, you know, or maybe if. If it was somebody here that we haven't played yet, we play both games here and and then you fly home. I mean, I, I've heard all those kind of thoughts. I think everybody's trying to do what's best. But I, I give the basketball uh, groups credit. I think they agree that everybody's trying to get as many games in as we can. Don't worry about what's fair and unfair because you're not going to win that battle. It's, you know, we just played six out of nine on the road. We just played three games in six days on the road coming off COVID. Is that fair? No, it's not. If it was unhealthy for the players, then I think we got to do something about it. But as of right now, we don't think it's unhealthy. It's just not, it's not as conducive for everybody. But I think that stuff's going to happen there. I really do. And I, I don't think they're going to try to cut that schedule back yet. But I'd say in the next two weeks, if another team or two goes down, a whole team, um, there's going to be issues for sure where they're going to have to make some, some tough decisions. Well, you know, Matt Ishbia made my day better, um, but I'm I'm good. I really am. I'm I'm. Uh, I don't say that. You know, I, I'm disappointed in where we're at. I understand some of the reasons why we're at. Some of the reasons I don't understand are things I got to take responsibility for. And, uh, you know, in this league, you don't get to get healthy very often, you know, and that's the problem. I mean, if you're not playing really well, you're probably not winning. And uh, I've watched some of these other conferences, and uh, 
I'm not happy with some of our losses, but we've had less losses against teams that maybe we should have beat than a lot of teams have right now. And it's, it's just the nature of the beast that's keeping these kids on an even keel um, the best you can. It's pushing them, but understanding you can only push so far. It's not pampering them because it's a sport that takes it. And realizing the Big Ten, for all of you, there's just no conference even close. Now, that sounds arrogant and egotistical, but I think it's the truth. I think it's the best conference, and it's the best conference because we do have top to bottom. Uh, we don't only have a lot at the top, but we have good teams at the bottom, too. I told, I was thinking of telling Matt that if he would have made that layup on the last shot of the championship game, maybe he would have had a future in basketball and he wouldn't have made half the money that he's making as an entrepreneur in business. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think it is. It's, it's, you know, you get to live your dream. I mean, uh, Matt was a very motivated individual. You know, it's funny because his last year, you know, he sat right next to me on the bench because – I think he was looking at getting into coaching, and I, like like Jack Hoiberg, I enjoyed his perception of what was going on. He had a very good feel for things. So he kind of sat right next to me uh, for a lot of those games, and uh, I, uh, I said, man, it's a good thing he didn't go into coaching because he's done uh, very well for himself. And I really appreciate the way he's taking care of a lot of our former players and some football players, you know, he's – I think he appreciates where he was at, where he's going. Some of that money going into um, future endeavors for athletes here is really uh, not only much needed, and uh, but over needed. Um, you know, guys that aren't pro basketball or football or hockey or baseball players, you know, or ladies that aren't pro uh, basketball or volleyball players. Uh, this is going to give them a center and a chance to to uh, get into business world that's been so important to Matt and his dad. Uh, you know, his dad's got to be proud as hell. I mean, uh, I remember often his dad and my dad being at uh, Final Fours during those three years, two years, and uh, spent a lot of time talking. And I think his dad will be proud because Matt did something. He took a business and he took it to another level. And uh, you know that would make uh, if, if I'm Jeff, I'd be I'd be very proud of that. Well, first of all, I, I think that because I've been here a long time, you know, Matt gives me credit on what I did for his business. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I have trouble figuring out everything his business contains, you know. And then Mel uh, gives me credit because, you know, last summer um, when they started recruiting him, or even earlier than that, he had an interest in basketball, so I called and we got some film and we did some checking up on him. And he was kind of, he's kind of a cool kid that he just keeps talking, you know, and he kept calling all the time. And, uh, and sure enough, uh, you know, I knew we were getting back in the hunt with him because I thought we were out of it. And I walked out of my, uh, my shoot around at Iowa and I look at my phone and, and Keon Coleman's uh, had texted me. So I read the text, I gave him a buzz and, he told me that he really felt like he was thinking of coming here the next day. And uh, so I talked to Mel, and uh, that was pretty exciting, you know. And as far as his basketball, I said a lot of people talk about people playing both. We've done it here at Michigan State. We did it with Nick Saban. We did it with Smith. We did it with D'Antonio. We've, we've done it here. And, uh, and, you know, who knows what that will bring for Keon, but what – I know Mel for sure gave him the opportunity, and I know I sure gave him the opportunity that 
he will be able to try that if that's what he wants to do. As we know, very few kids are capable because everything's gotten to be such individual work now with each sport. But uh, I love two-sport guys. I've loved two-sport guys since since I was one myself in a very small, small school. But I, I've always uh, appreciated guys that played football. I think it's still a tougher sport that when you got one of those kind of guys around, I think it benefits you. So hopefully Keanu will finish out this year, get here, and uh, let Mel beat him up a little bit and then send him over to me for some rehab. All right, thanks, guys.